What's up, guys? Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. Uh, we got a social media phantom with us tonight. <laughs> uh, it's one of our guys, Anthony. Uh, how you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good, Coach John. How are you? Awesome, man. It's great to have you. So, uh, yeah, so some people may may uh, not know who you are. Obviously, you're not really kind of active too much. I kind of en- envy you a little bit. But uh, for those of the listening, uh, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, just tell us who you are and uh, what you got going on right now. Uh, sure. My name is Anthony Gargiulo. Um, I do a little bit of powerlifting out of New Jersey. I live in Morristown, and uh, I compete currently in USAPL. Um, was at Nationals last October. That was my last meet, and uh, you know I had a little trouble with my shoulder recently, so went a little bit easier on the benching. Looking to do a deadlift only competition just to keep things fresh cool. sometime in the summer, and then get back into a full meet sometime in the fall, probably. Very cool. Yeah. So you made uh, the prime time, which was really cool. Uh, Got to lift with like Big Ray and Dennis Cornelius and some of those heavy hitters, which was fun. So we'll uh, we'll definitely talk about that a little bit. But um, I want to rewind a little bit. I know you were involved with athletics uh, before getting into powerlifting. Uh, what got you into training initially, and uh, like how did that that journey kind of all start like for you? Yeah, I, I I was always a lifter insofar as I was training for football in college and high school. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have a pretty good strength coach in college and, you know, competed a little bit after college ended. And once that, you know, that, that came to its conclusion, I uh, was still lifting for fun, but, I, you know, I really kind of missed just the competitive sport environment. Yeah. You know, working, working isn't quite the same as competing, um, and I really got more and more into lifting. It was a good outlet for me, and uh, I got stronger and stronger, and the next natural progression for me was to, you know, to, to really see how strong I was and how far I could take it. That's why I ended up in powerlifting. Did you do a lot of, like, powerlifting for football, or did you do other stuff? Did you do any, like, weightlifting or, like, more plyometrics? Or, like, what kind of, like, how did your uh, your training kind of look when you were when you were kind of working, like, for more athletics and versus just, uh, just you know, competing on a powerlifting stage? I mean, they were giving us push-pull splits we were doing, but we were squatting, you know, we were squatting, front squatting, some hand cleans. Uh, which is a little bit different than what we do now. Uh, more accessory type work than we might do for powerlifting. But, you know, the core stuff was there. We deadlifted, we benched, we squatted, and did variations thereof. So, um, you know, that and, of course, we were running, which is something I haven't done in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's gone away. But, but uh, you know, the core lifting is, is, is very much the same. I think that obviously depends on who's your coach for, for strength and conditioning. Sure. But we do a lot of that kind of stuff. Cool. And then... Um... Were you, was your body weight kind of different, uh, like when you were competing, or uh, was it about like the same? Were you bigger for football, or like how how was that like? I had a well, not quite to not quite like you have, but I've had a I've had a weight journey in that I you know I graduated high school at one eighty five, really undersized, played at like two thirty in college, and then my senior year finally got a little bigger, ended up at uh, about two fifty five when I graduated, and then my first year. Playing pro, I was about 273, and now I sit around 255, 250, 260, depending on the time of year. And did you do anything in particular? Were you kind of force feeding, or like what were you what were you doing to kind of gain the weight at that at that point? I was I was eating everything in college. I was uh, I was getting up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. eating one of those one of those rolls of cookie dough <laughs> and, and going back to sleep to try wow. to gain weight. I was stuck at 225 so long. And I was mean, thing, but I just at that point I just wasn't I just wasn't an adult yet. I guess I was still a kid. Yeah. And so I was I was stuck forever. I was doing whatever I could to gain weight back then. If you uh, could go back, would you do things differently as far as as the diet or like or or did you just need to like just eat stuff like that just to get the calories in? Like what what advice do you have for maybe people watching this? Because we kind of even see that in powerlifting. Sometimes people will kind of jump up weight classes just for the sake of like increasing their total. Uh, but you know, as we kind of, you know, we're talking about a little bit before, like sometimes, you know, there's going to be some risk rewards and health factors there. Um, what advice would you give to people if they were trying to like maybe put some muscle on for whether it be for sports or, or for powerlifting, what advice would you, would you tell them now? People all the time are kind of asking about or wondering about how can I get my kid to gain weight? Even parents who have younger kids in in high school. And, uh, at least for me personally, you know, it, it just came with age. Yeah. Uh, you know, g- genetically, my my family is pretty tall, but not particularly big. So I'm you know, the biggest person. But that was from dieting and exercising over the course of time. But I guess people that are younger that are trying to do that, 
at some point you're going to go from being a boy to being a man. And when yeah. that transition happens, that's when you're going to gain your natural muscle mass. And of course, as you know, people do other things to accelerate that yeah. naturally or otherwise um, in the interim. But uh, it's never worth it, to, in my mind, to, to gain weight, uh, just for the sake of gaining weight and getting heavier. Even if you get stronger, you know, proportionally, you're not you're, you're not gaining strength at the pace you probably would have really want to, uh, just getting super heavy. Yeah. I think what's tough sometimes with athletics, whether it be high school or college, is that, you know, you have this kind of like finite like window. Um, whereas something like powerlifting, potentially you could do it for literally decades. Um, a lot of people are kind of so worried about like the next meet or like the next, uh, you know, they're, they're really kind of focused on the short term. Um, but yeah, I always tell people just don't be in like such a rush. Uh, that's like one of, I think, the, the biggest mistakes I made. I don't know if I ever told you this story, Anthony, but uh, my uh, first, so my first competition at 18 years old, I was 198 pounds. Um, and, uh, I started to plat after a couple of years of competing, um, I started to kind of plat, at least in my mind, I was kind of plateauing, but you know, meanwhile, like I'm a, te a teenager, 19, maybe 20 years old, uh, I'm finishing up like some, uh, you know, my college years and, uh, you know, the time, the information at the time was like, just get bigger, just get bigger, just get bigger. And I'm sure that's probably drilled in your head with football too, is like, you know, just get bigger. Um, so I went to 220, I went to 242. And I remember I skipped 275 because I remember like I missed weight for 275 and I went right right to the 308s. And uh, you know it's been like a 10 year you know now I'm I'm back under uh, you know I'm back back at 250 and that's you know that's what I weighed like 10 years ago, uh, like right when I was like transitioning going to like 198 into the 220 and the 242 class. So yeah, I think slow and steady that kind of wins the race. I think everyone's in such a rush. Uh, so I think it's kind of you know cool for you to hear that, and I think yeah, like you're gonna you're gonna gain weight naturally, uh, but I think yeah, try not to like with anything else. If if you kind of have those shortcuts, there's gonna be like detriments, and there's gonna be things that kind of happen. Like you're gonna now like you know ten years later, now I kind of have to like kind of pause my strength training a little bit, get my weight in check, so I can kind of continue to do the sport that I love. So yeah, two steps forward, you know. Just back, take a step forward, but I, I see it every day, even you know, in my kind of finite world that I live in, that people are always trying to go quick, you know, and uh, sometimes that backfires. But the, you're right, the pressure is pretty high to perform in the small window, particularly for you know, team athlete, team sports like uh, like football, yeah. baseball, lacrosse, what have you. Totally. So uh, transitioning, um, what kind of I guess uh, was obviously it seemed like you had a passion for lifting. Um, I know for myself, that's kind of, I played football, I wrestled, not, not to the level that you did, but uh, that's kind of like how I got into powerlifting. My uh, my uh, middle school wrestling coach was a powerlifter, so uh, the college I went to didn't have a wrestling team, so I just like needed something to stay competitive. You know, what uh, made you decide to do your first meet, and what was that experience like like for you? I, I kind of fell into it insofar as I had been training at a gym, and I, it was a commercial gym, and I didn't really like it, so I switched to a to a, a different gym, and it was there were a lot of strength athletes there, and a lot of bodybuilders there, so a lot of stronger guys there, and so I got some exposure in this place called Diesel in uh, North Brunswick, yep. New Jersey, and uh, so I got some exposure to people that were doing powerlifting, and I was like, wow, that looks like fun, and I was watching what they were doing, and I'm like, okay, they're you know they're as strong as me, or maybe a little bit even a little bit stronger, and I never really thought I could be you know competitive in a strength sport, and uh, I'm not saying that I am you know a terribly competitive you know. Person, but I'm, I'm, I've gotten up there over the years, and I figured I might as well, you know, see how I measured up to the competition and see how far I could take it. And it really gave my lifting a yeah, new purpose because I was kind of recycling the same training programs and, you know, right. trying to get a little bigger and cut a little weight to slim down and tone up. It just kind of got a little boring. Whereas with powerlifting is a very, it's very objective. You know, you have to lift it the weight you didn't. I really, I really liked that uh, that part of it. Cool. And then did you kind of go in with that first meet, like with the plan? Did, were you kind of picking your own attempts? Like what was that like? Did you, you know, did you kind of have like, do you kind of have a handle of what you were getting into or? Uh, Not really, man. There was yeah. a, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of chiefs, not too many Indians in that, right, in that right. gym. And they, were, they were really helpful to me actually because yeah. I got a lot of good advice. I just got a lot of advice. Yeah. Um, so, like, so I kind of picked Yeah, out, too many that? cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, but it was it actually worked out really well. I mean, I, I, I picked some openers that I knew I would get, and I got them. And then from there, I you know I didn't really have a plan after that, so I just kind of went by feel. Um, and it worked out pretty well. Um, you know, I missed my last bench, my last deadlift, um, but I got my squats, and you know it went it went it went fine. 
you know, it was, uh, it was an RPS meet, so, uh, you know, I don't know how good my depth might have been in the squat, potentially, in that... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it, the, the standard's a little bit, yeah, the, obviously the USAPL is, like, the standard's very strict, um, especially when you get to the Nationals. Um, they're not letting anything slide. <laughs> you know, no, and I saw people get, uh, sure. get tossed out, you know, three... Three uh, missed squats because they moved their feet, locking out the squat like they shifted their heels. Yeah, little, little, little yeah, little there. things. They're like they're not, they're not uh, letting anything slide. Which you know, and when you get to that level, like of course, you know, it's gonna, that's how it's gonna be. But I know sometimes it could be like a lot for a newer lifter that if they never, uh, you know, if they don't really know all the rules and stuff, it could be really challenging, especially if you're trying to do do that yourself. Um, yeah. So obviously, you know, you've only done like a handful of meets so far. Um, you've, you've achieved a pretty high level of success, but obviously, you know, people, I think it's good for you to hear that you were training for several, several, several years, you know, you're playing football at a high level. So obviously that you had a very good like foundation, like starting out. Um, I think like, you know, your explosiveness and things like that, all those things kind of play into the factor. Uh, what has your journey been like from that first RPS me to, you know, you, like I said, you, uh, what was really cool is that I think besides Ray, um, I think you out deadlifted everybody besides Ray on uh, on your in your session, which was pretty cool uh, to watch you kind of uh, hang with the big boys and uh, you know hit a PR total. So, uh, what, what how has that transition been like, and what are some things that you've been doing to help uh, kind of you know keep the progress going and keep uh, your totals increasing each meet? Yeah, well, I think uh, I think getting some really you know focused training that was really specific to powerlifting, you know, kind of programmed out. And then uh, learning how to peak, I didn't really, you know, again, I had a lot of good ideas from the people I was training yeah. with prior to that, but I didn't really have, like, one set strategy. So having, like, a set strategy, which, of course, you know, you helped me out with, uh, that's been really helpful for me. And, um, you know, just, like, a lot of the meat strategy, meat technique that, that we've learned over the course of time, um, that's been really helpful, too. You know, it's, I don't get too mentally psyched up, I don't get too mentally psyched out, I should say, yeah. for the meets, but just getting a little a little, bit, a little bit of experience underneath your belt really makes a big difference, kind of knowing how you're feeling, that kind of knowing what you need to do to prep the days leading up to that has been really helpful, but, um, you know, as far as continuing to increase the totals, um, understanding that I don't have to go, you know, super, super heavy for singles to get stronger, so, you know, we talked before about taking two steps back or taking a step, you know, two steps forward, one step back. You kind of have to back off a little bit yeah. and work with some lighter weights and different rep ranges, and that will actually get you stronger. I mean, when training the deadlift, you know, I don't really go over too much over 700 pounds um, prior to peaking yeah, without, hand, unless there's like a band involved. Hand, hand, yeah, a handful of times. And I think uh, I think that's actually it's a really good point because I think sometimes people also, uh, you know, they feel like they need to hit like their, the numbers in the gym. And I know like when they get to a level like you, you know, you're approaching – you know, knock on wood, we're like, you know, we're working towards that 800 plus pound deadlift. Um, you know, uh, you know, that's going to take a lot out of you doing that in training. Um, so like really saving those big lifts for the competition, I think, I think is big and just kind of trusting the process, understanding that the peak is going to carry you through, uh, and just understanding that you just, as long as you pr produce enough stimulus from like those, the volume that you're doing, uh, the, the number of sets and reps that you're doing, you know, that's going to kind of help carry you through. And then obviously, you know, working with different rep maxes and different special exercises. You know, we talked yeah. about using like reverse bands and stuff to kind of overload and just have your body feel the weight without actually having to, you know, go through a full range of motion with it and have it unloaded a little bit in the most vulnerable position. So I think all that is great. Um, yeah, I think people, uh, people really get caught up doing singles, doubles, triples over and over and over and over again. And at some point that's going to get you injured or it's going to burn you out. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah, do you think some of like the variety and special exercises kind of helped you kind of stay like relatively like healthy and injury free throughout like the you know your past couple of training cycles? Yeah, I mean it's been uh, it's it's definitely been helpful. I mean I was you know prior to prior to that RPS I man I was pulling pretty heavy pretty frequently. Yeah, and I kind of got away with it because you know I was working in the high sixes you know kind of range, but now that 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 same percentage range would be like close to closer to eight. Like that would, you know, doing that for a couple reps or even a you know, rep for me is going to knock me out personally for a, quite a, for a little while. And uh, that's tough. You don't want that when you're trying to also train the squat in yeah. addition to the lift, you know. Sure. What has, uh, I know, one thing I like to ask too, you know, you have some athletic experience. Has anything in football, like competing in football, like helped you, whether it be mentally or physically, like has that like mental approach? Because I know there's a lot of people maybe listening to this a lot of people like powerlifting may be the first competition they ever do. 
Um, and I think that people kind of forget sometimes that, you know, competing and like getting on a stage, getting on a platform, getting on a field, that takes a, a different skill in itself. I'm sure like there's, I'm sure that you probably know people that maybe practice really well, but then they weren't like the best in the game situation. So uh, how has yeah. some of like that stuff like transferred over to, to powerlifting that's helped you, that you learned in uh, football? I think a lot of the discipline, you know, has been helpful. I think that's pretty, no, that's probably pretty obvious. But um, just being committed to what you're doing, being committed to your goals, um, that's been really helpful. Having that kind of, for lack of a better term, a skill set, uh, kind of ingrained in me over the course of time. Um, but also kind of being able to execute on game day. Um, to go back to the, the, the football anecdote, it um, that that really makes a big difference. You know, I see people get pretty psyched up and then over psyched up, maybe psyched out even. Uh, during the meet, and I, that's been from the first meet that I did all the way to nationals, where people who clearly knew how to execute and yeah. clearly have executed in the past were not able to execute when it counted. Um, so I think being used to being under pressure, being used to being under a lot of different sets of eyes all at once, that didn't really doesn't really phase me um, too much. I think that, that that's that's an advantage that I definitely have. I mean, you know, you've seen me. Squat and deadlift, and I'm like they kind of make fun of me because I'm the guy that's always smiling when I'm doing my doing my attempts. But I, mean, I just enjoy it, and you just don't don't let that get yeah. to you, and uh, it makes a big difference. Yeah, and I'm sure like in, in, in you, you have that intensity like inside. You know, you don't always have to get like all riled up. You do a really good job of, I think, conserving your energy because I think the people that get really too riled up, especially if there's if there's an opener and stuff, you know, by the time you get to like your last deadlift, you're kind of you're kind of done. You know, it's definitely, I think you do a good job of really kind of uh, just being cool, calm, and collected, and then, like, kind of turning it on, like, when you need to. Um, but, yeah, I think you got to figure out what works for you. But I think, uh, I know, like, for me, when I started, um, I know my first couple of meetings, you know, I'm, I'm listening to, like, all this crazy, like, music and stuff. and getting all, now, like, in between attempts, I'm, like, I'm joking, I'm laughing. I'm, and then, like, right before, like, if maybe I'm in the hole or on deck, then I'm starting to kind of refocus. And then, like, once you hit the chalk bowl, then it's, like... Tunnel vision, you know. Uh, so yeah, I think, that, that's, that's the fun part, man. That's the easy part. That's all you got to do is one rep. You know, you don't have to do it's crazy sets. Uh, you know, four sets of eight yeah. or five sets of eight that everybody hates. You just got to do a single. That's, yeah, that's the yeah, that's right. It's the hard part. Like the hard part's done. I think. I think that's good. It's kind of you know, and I think it's kind of like like I said, if you're an, if you're a former athlete, like leading up to that competition, it's like you know, all that off season work, all that preparation, all that practice, kind of comes to fruition, and then you can kind of have fun and. And just kind of bang and just do your thing. So, really cool, man. Um, wanted to shift gears a little bit. So, uh, I want to talk about like you know being a family man, you know having having a child and uh, how like the family and training dynamic kind of works uh, in your house and and uh, you know how you've been able to kind of balance you know supporting your family, uh, you know being a father and then like also still getting like your training in. Yeah, I think it's uh, becoming more flexible. Really. <laughs> You got to be. I, I like to work out traditionally from six to eight. That was my time of the day that I would love to work out, and that always worked out fine when it was just me or me and my wife. But once the little guy came around, you know, a you want to spend as much time with them as you can, yeah. And b you know you got to give you got to give uh, the real working person, which is which is your the mama, uh, a little bit of a break whenever whenever you can. So and of course you know she likes to get to the gym too. So uh, trying to uh, to not uh, go right from work to the gym and give a little more time when uh, when you can get it because you know they sleep a lot so you don't want to miss uh, you don't want to miss that that bedtime at least for me um so i've been lifting earlier in the day later at night you know on the weekends more and it's really getting used to i just shuffle around my days however i have to be getting the workouts that i have to get in and uh there are some times where i have to abbreviate and there's some times where i can take yeah. you know full time but um yeah that's, that's definitely a bit of a challenge and you kind of lose a lot from the sleep perspective um, so the recovery gets a little more challenging and the eating gets a little more challenging, but, uh, you make do. Yeah. Do, do you have any advice for maybe people that are expecting or maybe they're, they have kids or they're looking to have kids? Like what are some other things, you know, besides being flexible, what are some other, like, I think maybe kind of going off what you said, you know, don't be afraid to like modify your workouts. I think that's a big one. Anything else that kind of comes uh, to the top of your head as far as advice you can kind of give people in, in that situation? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think about, to take the modifying thing one step further, I mean, there are some days where, you know, but everybody knows this, you're going to get there and you're just going to crush it and you're going to feel great. And there's some days where you're going to get there and you're not going to be feeling as great. So not letting that get you down when you have a bad day. And when you have a really good day, not don't get ahead of yourself and all of a sudden you go off the program and bump everything up for the next workout because you're going you're gonna to pay, pay the price. 
um, but also just, you know, setting ground rules with your spouse um, about how this is going to work. You know, it's an important thing for you, um, you know, setting up a plan, and we, we really try to do that, and most of the time we stick to it, sometimes we don't, um, but, you know, we try to make sure that we each get to the gym, we want to get to the gym a certain number of days out of the week, and whether that's babysitters or, you know, I put into bed one night by myself so that my wife can go to the gym, but, you know, if everybody understands what the end goal is and agrees to kind of a general plan, that makes it a lot easier. That way nobody kind of feels like they're being shortchanged or, yeah. you know, put on the back burner. Yeah, I think the communication is key, like, with everything. And, you know, it seems kind of simple enough, but, uh, and I think, you know, a lot of people, whether they have, have kids or not, have family obligations or not, uh, it's okay if the, the you don't execute the plan, like, perfectly, like what it's on paper. Like, do the best you can, get in your work, um, you know, put in effort, and like I said, don't get, like, too caught up with, you know, if you have a bad day here and there, you know, celebrate, like, those good days, but stick to the plan the best you can, put in the effort, and oftentimes it'll still, like, work out. As long as you, like, do the best you can, you put in that effort, uh, execute the best you can, a lot of times you're still going to have great, great result at the end of the cycle, and, and uh, you know, maybe if, like I said, you adjust your expectations a little bit, uh, but you can still make great progress and still like continue to compete and, and do better and enjoy the sport. So, yeah, and the longer you're in some kind of competitive athletics, powerlifting, or other way, you kind of know, you know, you can kind of self-regulate a little bit more. You know, it doesn't mean that you just kind of can't, you know, sign us, cash it in, and don't do anything, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to go too far one direction or the other. But you, once you've got a little bit of experience under your belt, you kind of know what you need to do and uh, to get things to get the uh, goal accomplished. Yeah, I agree. I think that's definitely the sign of a more mature lifter and just a more experienced like athlete for sure. Is that they kind of know like what they're capable of. They know like what's in their gas tank, and they know like what's appropriate to kind of give that day for sure. Cool, man. Um, another question I like to ask is if you if someone maybe is on the fence of competing, maybe they're not sure like what they want to do. They're not sure about like how to get started. Uh, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to get involved in the sport and they're not really sure like where they should start? Yeah, I think a lot of people, and I'm always encouraging people now that I do it to, to try it because it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. you know, I had my wife did her first meet a couple months ago, and awesome. uh, you know, I, I, I hear a lot like, "Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to be competitive, or I'm not going to win." Um, but I mean, of course, everybody wants to win, but that's the, it's kind of a nice sport in that, yeah, you can compete against everybody else, but it's really a way for you to kind of continue to measure against yourself. Um, so if you if you can get into that mindset. And take that into your first meet or your first you know, prep for a meet. You know, you're really going to have, I think, a better experience than trying to, you know, come out on top your very first time out. So setting realistic expectations um, is helpful in that. But as far as like the training is concerned, I mean, there's, you know, find the people in the gym, right? Or find the right people that you know, or pair people on online or wherever. Find the right resources. There's a lot of good information out there. But um, you know, talk to some people that have done it. Talk to some people that know what they're doing, and uh, you know. Try something and, and stick to it for six, eight weeks or for a week prep. And uh, don't worry about it being like so super optimized or so perfect that you're kind of paralyzed by over analysis. Yeah. Right? Paralysis by analysis kind of a thing. But, um, you know, pick a, pick a realistic goal for yourself. Pick a meet. Pick some friends. Pick a, pick someone to guide you in a little bit and, uh, and just do it. I mean, it's it's all, it's so fun. All I got to do are, are, are three singles and three different exercises, so nine lifts. It's pretty. Yeah. It's not. It's not that crazy. Uh, the no. prep is where all the work lies. Yes. Competition is the easy part. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I think people get too caught up with like having this perfect meet or whatever, this perfect prep, and just go out there, have fun, see if you like it. Um, it's definitely a great community. I think people are really supportive. Uh, like I said, there's a lot, lot, lot of positivity, and like I said, if you can kind of get with a crew or get with a coach or like combination, I think that makes it that much better. So. And you make a good point that this is very friendly. I mean, the biggest guys in your gym are probably the most willing to help you, um, generally speaking. I mean, I don't think, not going, I don't think I've met a powerlifter across, you know, all the ones that I've met at this point that wasn't a nice person or wasn't encouraging or wasn't, you know, cheering when you hit that, that, that big lift at the meet. You know, everybody is, is pretty much on board with helping each other get better. Yeah, and like I said, that's not the case in the, you know, <laughs> in every other sport. So it's definitely, uh, it's, a, it's definitely a welcoming community, and I think, um, you know, it's it's still like a growing sport, and it's still kind of a little bit of a fringe thing. So I think that people, uh, you know, when you see another guy like kind of deadlifting, or whatever, you kind of, you know, you kind of have that in common. You ha you can kind of build that camaraderie, and it definitely helps a ton. So, 
Yeah, ask for help, please, especially in your deadlifts, if you need it. <laughs> That's your thing, man. Uh, so, what are some of like your goals moving forward, and like, what would you like to see from yourself, and like, you know, the next, maybe, you know, the next couple of years, or you know, next couple of meets? Like, what are you looking to do? Well, I definitely want to break the eight hundred barrier for me with the deadlift. I think that I'm strong enough to do it, um, so I just got to execute that now. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I'd like to. I don't know if I'll ever hit a two thousand pound total, but that'd be something to strive for a long, long term. Yeah, but, I, uh, I definitely think that um, you know you're not too far off. You know, so. Yeah, I mean that would be a real reach, but for me, I just want to keep bettering myself. I mean, I know I, I can do a lot better on the bench. Um, right now, you know, I'm pretty focused on the deadlift, but uh, it's hard to kind of, as we talked about, have all three lifts rise. Definitely, yeah. it's 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 a really good point. I think that's you know, and uh, you know, and something like the bench too, like especially like depending on your build and stuff, like uh, you know, it's just gonna take some more time, especially the upper body stuff. It's a little bit slower usually to kind of build, but everyone's got their lift they're gonna excel at. Uh, everyone's got their weaknesses, but just do your best to bring up uh, your weaknesses and keep and keep continue to you know build on your strength strength as, as well. So yeah, get cool. that squat to seven, get the deadlifts you know mid eights, and see where we can go on the bench, and everybody will be happy. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you're off to a great start already. I remember uh, <laughs> I remember at nationals this this past year, like people like it's like is he why, is he he's opening kind of heavy. It's like yeah, it's like you know. <laughs> Because, like, your, your, your other lifts were, like, you know, you were more toward, like, the uh, the beginning of the flight. And then the deadlift. Oh, I was at the very beginning of the and flight. Then, uh, <laughs> and then the deadlifts just, like, kind of switched, which was funny. But, yeah. but um, yeah, you did great, man. I'm real proud of you. Uh, it's been great uh, watching your journey. Um, like I said, it's just really cool. We got, you know, we got a couple of people that we're working with that are, uh, we, get, we I don't know if you, how much you follow our stuff. We have another guy. Uh, I'm hoping to get him on the podcast, too, that he actually just uh, pulled a, uh, 805 and training with with straps but pulled the 805 and training he's uh he's looking to he's overseas right now but um he's looking to uh do a usapl meet and qualify so it'd be really cool to get you guys together kind of duking it out because that'd yeah, be, be cool so it'd be it'd be fun but um anyway uh i know you got you know uh you know your family stuff to get and i appreciate you kind of uh staying out staying up a little later to do the call um I, I know that you don't have any social or anything, but maybe if, I don't know if you want to let people know like what gym you train at. Maybe if they're maybe they're in the New Jersey area, they're not sure. Like if they want to go to a powerlifting gym, they could check out. Uh, maybe they're listening and they're kind of around you. Like what gym you train at or anything like that. Any anything like that yeah. you want to plug? Yeah, but I usually uh, well, not usually. I'm always at Fitness Factory in Rockaway, and there's a pretty good. Uh, it's a nice mix of commercial and and uh, powerlifting. So we got a lot of good and it, people on a lot of good equipment over out there. And is uh, Dennis owns owns that or? That's right. So yeah. if you guys Dennis are thinking, sure. yeah. yeah, so I mean he's you know one of the best uh, benchers, you know probably IPF history. So uh, yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's okay. You never see a guy that it's so, it's so funny. You look at him and he's like, you can tell he's a fit guy, but then you got you get him on the bench press. Yeah, and you're like how is. How is he doing this? How is it possible? It's pretty. It's he's pretty, so efficient. It's he's so good. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I mean, I've. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's been probably. Yeah, he's been. I remember, like, he was. Yeah, he's got to be competing like twenty years now or something. I don't know, but it's been like, I don't know. I remember because I remember when I was starting out, he was still. Com- he was competing then too. So, and that yeah, was like. He's, uh, that was, like, he's doing a full meet now. A full USAPL I meet. He are going to be kind of doing some prep for together. Okay, that's cool. That'll be that'll yeah. be, that'll be. He fun. wants to go to nationals and. Then, uh, there very or cool there. well yeah if you got if you guys are in the uh new jersey area you can check out uh you know the uh, fitness factory so um definitely check it out uh th- thank you guys for listening to the podcast if it did help you uh please share it uh please give this uh podcast a five-star review on itunes helps other people find us uh thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time